welcome to the ASPR Master of Supply Chain Management and Logistics Information Session. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, before we start our presentation, I'd like to do a few introductions and we'll, we'll do those right now. My name is Eva Morphy and I'm the Graduate Program Manager here at the ASPR School of Business to Clark School of Graduate Studies. I work with the students in all of our graduate programs here at ASPR, so we have five at this time, the MSCM and the MFIN and the MBA, as well as two research programs, the MSC and the PhD. I'm here to guide you and assist you through the application process and then all through all your academic needs and issues that may arise while you're in the program all the way through graduation and hopefully beyond as well. So thank you so much for being here and, uh, and joining us for this session. Um, hello everyone, my name is Farva Zedi and I'm uh, one of the graduate career consultants here at ASPR. I work with the Masters of Business Administration, Masters of Finance and Masters of Supply Chain Management students to help them reach their career goals. Welcome everyone. Fantastic. My name is Olawole Liro. Uh, I work uh, in the same role as FAWA as graduate consultant for the ASPA School of Business, working with students in our professional programs, MBA, Masters of Finance and Masters of Supply Chain and Logistics. Um, you know, we, we work with you throughout your program uh, from when you become a student of, uh, of the ASPA School of Business throughout your program, exploring potential labor market opportunities, and even when you become an alumni. Uh, and, and I'm looking forward uh, to this presentation to talk about how the CBC can be of benefit to you. Thank you, uh, Eva, Olawoli, and Farva for those introductions. Um, I'm going to just share my screen and provide the agenda for the, the session today. So for our session today, we're going to quickly um, go through, um, to give you a sense of place, we'll speak, speak about Winnipeg, Manitoba, where we're located here. Um, some of you may know our city already, and some of you may be located in different places in the world. So we want to ensure that we give you a sense of our city. We'll speak about the Asper School of Business and some of the, the benefits and the amazing history and background that we have at our school. Then we'll speak about the Master of Supply Chain Management and Logistic Program degree benefits, um, details about the program specifically, including our Career Development Center and other elements like that. Um, and we'll also speak about the admission details where uh, Eva Morphy will cover the components required to apply to the program. So Winnipeg is located in the geographic center of Canada and North America. Um, the big part about where our school is in Winnipeg that's really relevant for the Master of Supply Chain program is we are in what they call the, the heart of North America. Um, and in terms of our connection to supply chain and logistics, we are known as the continental hub for supply chain, transportation and logistics, which makes it a really um, a perfect place to take a Master of Supply Chain based on our connections to a number of transportation hubs. The population of our city is about 850,000, which makes it um, large enough for many opportunities, but also small enough that you're not stuck in traffic on your way to class or um, fighting for uh, parking or different things like that in other locations. Um, our average summer temperature is 24 degrees Celsius and our average winter temperature is minus 12 which really allows for um, great um, opportunities in terms of outdoor experiences in both weather. Uh, in the winter, we have many outdoor activities, including one of the longest skating rinks in the world all along our river. Um, and also our, in our summer, when we have nice warm weather, um, there's many lakes and different opportunities here to enjoy the outdoors and, and really enjoy our summer weather. Um, there's more than 100 languages spoken in, in Winnipeg. We're very multicultural, very open to um, many different people from all over the world that have immigrated here with lots of great community connections for different um, uh, cultures and, and backgrounds here. And another thing that's really key and really beneficial for you if you're interested in joining um, our program here and potentially working in Canada is um, for any program and, and, and the Master of uh, Supply Chain program is one of those that's a two-year degree, it allows you when you graduate to work for three years with a three-year work permit within Manitoba. So it's a great opportunity if you're looking to gain work experience and, and use a work visa when you're done the program. Um, another thing that's really important with our, with our city is we are very cost competitive. 
Um, you can see that we're one of the most cost competitive cities across all of the US and Western Canada. And while this statistic is from 2016, I know there's a new report coming out and um, we continue to be at this place in terms of um, the cost of living here, housing costs, monthly rent. And you can see here um, in terms of our city compared to some of the other larger cities within Canada, um, such as Calgary, Toronto or Vancouver, our uh, rental cost is much less, which definitely allows the your investment into the program to go a little further because you can afford um, um, both your, your living costs here as well. The Asper School of Business, we are home to, um, we have a strong history and background here. We are home to the Bachelor of Commerce program. Um, which is our undergraduate program with a really long history and very, uh, it's actually quite a prestigious undergraduate program at the Asper School of Business or within the University of Manitoba. And many of our graduate or undergraduate students will eventually go into our um, graduate programs. We're home to the MBA, the Master of Finance, uh, the Master of Supply Chain Management and Logistics program, and then also the Master of Science and PhD degrees in business. Um, a key part as well about our professional programs is they're part of the Stu Clark Graduate School, which was renamed in 2019 thanks to a $10 million investment from our alumni, Stu Clark. So the reason we mention this is there are a lot of good investments, uh, like outstanding investments going into our graduate programs thanks to this investment, including building upgrades, an entire fifth floor of our school being upgraded for professional graduate students and graduate students as a whole. Um, along with that is support for students if they participate in case competitions or they do any travel for our school. This is covered by our school thanks to some of the investments. We also have outstanding fellowships um, and other opportunities that are um, a result of the strong investments in our school. Um, we're home to the Career Development Center, which Farva and Olawoli will speak about as we come um, to that point in the presentation. The Career Development Center is outstanding for all of our professional graduate students. Um, it is about with when entering the program, it's not just about the academic degree that you end with, which is outstanding, but it's also about the career advancement that you gain through the program so that you're ready when you go to an interview or apply for that career that you're looking for when you graduate, you're ready to nail the interview you to um, really impress the, the employer, the potential employer, and help you attain that degree. And the great part about being in our programs is even as an alumni, when you graduate from the program, you have the opportunity to work with the Career Development Center through your career. So even, say, five years after you graduate from the program, you can connect with our Career Development Center as an alumni and reach out to them and, and get them to look through your resume or prepare you for that interview. It's a long-term commitment that our Career Development Center has. We're also home to the Stu Clark Center for Entrepreneurship, which many of our professional graduate students um, have an interest in entrepreneurial endeavors. Uh, so it's uh, really beneficial um, within our school here for you and your career goals. Um, we're home to the Warren Center for Actuarial Studies and Research, and we're also home to um, a, a, an award-winning and long history with the, the Transport Institute, which has a really strong connection to the supply chain and logistics area within Manitoba, um, North America, and globally as well. Another thing that's really key is our school is AACSB accredited. So all of our business programs here are accredited by the AACSB. And what's this means, this is the world's premier accreditation association for business schools. Only 5% of our schools worldwide receive this designation. To qualify for this, we need um, strong professors. Our professors need to be published um, internationally in high level publications. Our students, when they graduate, we want to ensure they have great career um, advancement and great salaries. Um, the courses in our programs and the component of our programs have to follow a strict criteria in terms of approaching things with financial proficiency, ethics-based learning, strategic thinking, and a number of components um, that really ensure that when you're taking the program, you're getting a high quality business education. And this accreditation is that, that signal that you are. 
So right now, one of the things, and we mentioned this in terms of that investment in our school, our school has recently, and the, the graduate programs, for instance, have gone through um, a, a major upgrade. The entire fifth floor of the Stuclar Graduate School has been revised. Um, and updated. Um, one of the really nice things and a unique thing about the University of Manitoba is we're one of the, the oldest schools in Western Canada. So if you go on our campus, there's a real mix of um, older buildings that are over 100 years old and more modern buildings. And we're in one of the sides of the more modern, especially on our in our graduate program. So I'm going to just switch screens here and we have a little 3D tour of our um, our graduate school that I'm going to just quickly launch here for you to um, just a, a quick sense of what it looks like within our school and I'll launch this here. All right, so this here actually just to give you a sense, this is the um, the main floor of the Asper School of Business. Our school is about six floors high. Uh, you can see here lots of natural light in the beginning or in the uh, in the school itself when you when you come into it. And I'm just going to go quickly to the fifth floor, which is where the Stu Clark Graduate School is located. We have brand new classrooms, and we'll show you this here. You'll see this as we go. Um, there's an overview of our entire school here, but um, this here is one of our brand new classrooms up in the Stu Clark Graduate School. Um, there's lots of natural light, as you can see here. There's actually a view from, you can see campus as you're sitting in class. This, is, this was taken in the winter, so you can see snow on the buildings. But our school in this room has brand new audio video equipment, um, giving you the ability to connect. There'll be presentations at different um, times where you're connecting with different people from around the world. Um, and this is one of our, our largest classrooms specifically for the Stu Clark Graduate School. Another thing that has been redone for our program is we have um, specific study carols uh, for, and meeting rooms for our graduate students. And you can see here, this is one of them. We have about four of these or three of these up on the fifth floor. Um, they have nice soundproof barriers, spots for you to meet with your classmates. And then these classrooms here, you can book them out and it allows you a lot of the times within the graduate school, you have presentations and you can hook things up and prepare for your presentation. And also too, we have these new um, offices here. And this is actually where Farva and Olawoli offices are. So there's that really close connection um, there. And then finally, we have a brand new graduate lounge here. And this is here is specifically for our graduate students, but all within the MBA, Master of Finance, and um, Master of Supply Chain Management and Logistics program, including our PhD and MSc um, um, students. So this classroom here, or this, this graduate lounge here, allows you to come between classes. You can meet with your classmates. Um, we actually have a really nice uh, kitchen in here where you can store some of your items in there. And within the kitchen, we have a brand new coffee maker. On here, we'll usually have Bloomberg News and, and things like that. So just a quick view of what it's like and it looks like within the building. Um, and the nice thing about joining our program right now as a graduate student is you're entering a brand new wing of uh, our school. So I'm going to stop sharing this and I'll go back to our presentation here as well. So why take an ASPER Master of Supply Chain Management uh, and Logistics program? Um, why is this investment both of your, your time and your, your finances worthwhile? Well, we'd like to, to share some of that with you. So a Master of uh, Supply Chain and Logistics degree um, really prepares you for the supply chain industry and the logistics industry. And supply chain itself is a sequence of value added activities. And it's really central for all levels of management in all types of industries. Um, we've seen this through, through the pandemic um, and through another, uh, in terms of supply chain and how relevant it is in today's business market, there is a high and growing demand for trained professionals, both domestically and internationally. It's a growing career where there are more opportunities available than employees that can fill them. So to get your master's degree in this prepares you for many, many uh, career opportunities that come with that. The key thing, and I mentioned this earlier about Winnipeg, we are, as noted, a continental hub for transportation and logistics. There are more than 4,300 businesses and 40,000 workers employed in transportation and logistics in Manitoba. Um, we are also home to Centreport Canada, which is a 20,000 acre inland port, which connects the railways, flights, 
um, and another many trucking companies in terms of being in that hub for logistics and, and transportation. We're also home to more than 1,004 hired trucking companies and six of Canada's largest trucking companies. So lots of opportunities there for career advancement um, in that area. We're also uh, Canada's number one airport for scheduled freighter flights. And unique to us as well, we have rail access to North America's only Arctic seaport. So many great reasons to pursue this degree here and the connections that you'd have in our city. Additionally, one of the, the key things when we launched this program um, just over a year ago, um, to launch the program, we needed to ensure there was business and community support for the desire and the demand when this was proposed to our government. Um, and there were many businesses that, that expressed their support and their alliance with this. And some of these include Bison Transport, um, New Flyer Industries, or NFI Group. We have a, a, a large company called Gardawine Group. There's Centerport Canada, a number of aerospace companies, including Magellan Aerospace, Price Industries, and Princess Auto. I won't go into all the details of these, but all of these organizations are international uh, companies with many, many staff um, and employees and connections to global um, logistics and supply chain. Um, all of them are available if you, if you Google them. But we are expressing this to show that there are many opportunities for career advancement within the program if you take when you take the co-op component and also when you graduate. So in terms of our Master of Supply Chain program, some additional uh, advantages, and I've spoken about some of them already, but just to reiterate that, um, obviously the location. We are a, a, the ideal location to take this based on, on our connection to all of the, um, you know, being a hub for logistics. We are a world-ranked business school, um, and I'll speak about this shortly in terms of our AACSB accreditation. Um, we have uh, outstanding program flexibility. You can take the program part-time, or full-time. So if you're working while taking it, it allows your courses are in the evenings and weekends um, and it allows you to take them outside of your career or you can take it full-time in um, two years if, it's, if it works with the schedule. Um, and some of the classes are also in the day so you can fit that all in as well. Um, we also offer a unique four-month practicum component that Olawoli uh, and Farva will speak about coming up. Um, this is the co-op component that is very unique to our program, um, and it really allows you to gain work experience here. And then also one of the key things that we like to really pride ourselves on and speak about with our program is the focus on both the technical side and the efficiency side, but also looking at that human and sustainability side of it. Yes, the program is very much about, about efficiency um, and supply chain and looking at all those different bottlenecks, but we're also approaching it with that human aspect and the sustainable aspect. We have a number of professors that are very experienced and have a lot of background and research in the sustainability side of supply chain. So it's very much about the ethical human side, along with the efficiency side. And the reason I mention this is when you're in the program, you're going to have that broad based learning knowledge that is not just about the technical, but it is about going into your industry and being an outstanding leader that's able to take that perspective and approach those problems by looking both at your employees and the people that you serve, along with the environment and the globe and doing it in a way that's sustainable. So the MSc program and the MSCM program as a, as a component with some of the specific things, as I noted, you can take it full time or part time. So two years to six years, depending on what works for you. Um, there's a total of 48 total credit hours and each course is approximately three credit hours. So it's 15 prescribed courses. And then you have the three credits that, that cover that 48 credits for after the 45 credits, which is that four month practicum. So while you're taking the program and you're in that practicum, you're also getting your final three credits within it. Courses are offered evenings and weekends, as I noted, and we'll go into the co-op and applied project um, option. That's a real um, differentiator with our program. In terms of our curriculum, these are the key courses that make up those 45 credit hours within the program. You can see it's a real mix of leadership, 
um, negotiations, and very much a focus on supply chain and logistics. There is a mix of lean management, logistics management, purchasing and procurement. And as a note, some of the courses in here you will take with MBA students and with Master of Finance students, such as managing people and organizations, um, executive leadership and responsibilities, negotiation, some of those courses that you will also have MBA classmates in your courses with you. All of these courses are on our website, which allow you to go in and take a look at some of the specific projects and the details that you do with the course outlines. Um, and a real wide range of, of studies and professors and outstanding learning that you'll have in the program as well. Um, when we look at it, the key thing always with any professional graduate program is to look at what are your career opportunities when you're done. Um, one of the amazing things about the Master of Supply Chain and Logistics program is there are so many different areas and industries that you can work on when you work in when you graduate. Um, supply chain and understanding business efficiencies is needed in any career. I've listed some here, you know, you can work in agriculture, manufacturing, transportation, all the way to hospitality, entertainment, education. It's, there's a huge range. And I think that's the, the wonderful thing about the program is that career opportunities are, are very broad depending on your area of interest. So looking at the program and when you apply to the program, um, we provided here some admission statistics of the students that applied to the program that were successfully admitted, just to give you a sense of the, of the balance and the breakdown of the students that applied to the program. Um, when we had our first uh, admission here, 43% of the students that were accepted um, were female with an average GPA of about 3.57 on a 4.5 scale. And Eva will cover the details related to um, the GPA and requirements. Um, there's an average GMAT of about 625, and we'll speak about the requirements there as well. And an average age of the successfully admitted students of about 28, just to give you a sense of, of what that first group looked like. As our program is still relatively new, we'll know this, uh, we know this will change from term to term, but our very first cohort, um, this is sort of the, this, the, the breakdown of, of the students and, and the, the people that were admitted to the program. So now that I've spoken a little bit about the details in the program, the career opportunities and industry connections, um, I'd like to move into some of the experiential learning opportunities and I'll pass things over to my colleague Ola Woli here, who will speak about the, the specific career development opportunities within the program. Uh, well, again, my name is Ola Woli Luro and I'm one of the graduate career consultants at the ASPA School of Business. I will be sharing some experiential learning opportunities for our grad students, but uh, first of all, let me speak a little bit about the CDC. One of the first acronyms that you will learn as you join the ASPA School of Business is the term CDC, which stands for the Career Development Center. ASPA Career Development Center is your first point of contact for all your career development needs questions and support when you get accepted into your master's program throughout your time at the ASPA School of Business and even when you become an alumni. The graduate team at the ASPA School of Business uh, Career Development Center consists of four dedicated staff members, two career consultants, myself and my colleague on this call this morning, Fawa Zaidi. Uh, we also have a business and develop a professional development consultant and a director for the CDC and core programs who support all of our career development initiatives and projects. At the CDC, we believe that career development is a long-term process, lifelong process of learning, self-discovery, and decision-making that brings you closer to that ideal job, skill set, and career satisfaction. The CDC team is committed to help you thrive each step of the way whether you want to level up or grow your career or explore opportunities in other areas or occupational specializations. Your graduate team is here to help you navigate labor market demands, occupational options, and transfer or translate your academic success into a career that suits your personality, your skills, and your interests. We can help you shape your career through assessments, helping you identify unique interests that you didn't know was there prior to starting your MBA program, uh, short and long-term career options, 
and develop goals for the short, mid and long term success. Uh, one of the very central aspects of our work is employment preparation, and that is specifically talking about resume writing, cover letter writing, interview preparation, and job search assistance. And we hold several sessions where we dive into best practices in writing resumes and cover letters that are customized for the job posting. We offer extensive guidance and career counseling through personalized, personalized coaching sessions, group workshop sessions covering different aspects of employment preparation that I have talked about, resume writing, uh, job search, and interview preparation. The CDC team develops work integrated learning opportunities for each student throughout the MBA program, whether that is the, in the form of strategic full-time, part-time, or project work that is relevant to your career goals. Uh, importantly, the CDC coordinates and hosts several recruitment and networking events uh, all through every term at the ASPA School of Business. Uh, and, you know, we just create those connections with employment partners so that throughout each academic year, students are offered the opportunities to connect with businesses, develop their professional network, and explore labor market opportunities. Most of these opportunities have been uh, largely remote uh, in the last two years, but we're starting to bring these activities back into in-person programs so that students can again begin to foster that interpersonal conversation and develop their uh, networking skills. Another value adding uh, program option in the ASPR graduate program um, is the ASPR Graduate Mentorship Program. The ASPR Mentor Programs connect ASPR MBA, MFIN, and MSCM students with inspirational leaders in Winnipeg and across Canada. Uh, through group or individual one-on-one -on -one mentoring, this flexible program will allow students to build leadership skills, receive career guidance, and develop a network of business leaders. Asper mentors are senior level executives and highly skilled managers representing diverse professions and companies and industries. Uh, these mentors act as advisors and role models to Asper graduate students as they look to launch a new career, make a career change, or uh, just familiarize themselves with a new region. Through the mentoring experience, uh, students gain guidance and feedback on developing their leadership skills, information on industries or functions, and insight into business practices. The mentorship program does not earn you academic credit, but it is recognized for co-curricular record, the CCR. Um, the CCR is an official document issued by the University of Manitoba that summarizes each student's participation in university approved activities that support holistic development. So we look forward to receiving your application and welcoming you to the Asper School of Business Career Development Center. Another unique competitive advantage of our MSCM program is a master's co-op option. Co-op is an experiential learning program that offers you the opportunity to use your academic knowledge in professional productive work environments all while you earn money and also earn an academic credit. I wanted to quickly mention that the Master's Co-op program is a brand new experiential learning opportunity to our MSN program. However, we have had 15 years of success with our bachelor's level uh, core program and we're leveraging on this success to deliver our master's club opportunity. Our first cohort for students who will go out uh, in the master's core program for MSN will be in the summer of 2023. The core program provides an opportunity to explore diverse career paths, professions, industries, companies, and build a professional network either to kickstart your career or to advance your career in the marketplace. Master's Club offers one paid four month work time experience. Graduate students will leave as part with four months of paid work experience and a exclusive access to Manitoba's top employers. 
Co-op students benefit from extensive professional development training that is customized to support you either through individual coaching or group workshop sessions to hone skills in the different workplace preparation topics that we talked about earlier, whether that is in resume writing, job search assistance, interviewing, and workplace preparedness. Uh, I want to also mention that the co-op option for the MSCM program is not free. There is a 5,000 fee for co-op, but we estimated that the return on investment for this program will yield at least 100% of that cost. We estimate that co-op students will make somewhere between 20 to $25 an hour, which will translate into uh, an excess of $10,000 for the 420 full-time hours for co-op. I'd like to mention that students in the MSN program who decide not to pursue the COP opportunity, we have an option to complete an applied project in supply chain management and logistics. We're under the supervision of a faculty advisor. They will explore or address real issues in the field of supply chain and logistics in the context of, of Manitoba or in Canada in close consultation with their target organization. So as a component of your program, you can decide to take that last three credit hours that Rhiannon had talked about as a co-op option or to complete an applied project option. And we are really looking forward to working with you at the ASPAR School of Business and helping you navigate your career paths in the field of supply chain and logistics. Thank you, Olawoli. Um, I think as well, we have a little bit of information here about the applied project, as Ola Woolley had mentioned, um, for those that are interested in um, doing this as opposed to a co-op. So there's the two options there. So some really uh, outstanding opportunities that Ola Woolley had mentioned, and, and it really aligns with the, the connections that we have to the business industry um, that is further reinforced by our Career Development Centre. Thank you, Ola Woolley. Also too, we have a number of uh, student competition opportunities and I'll speak about that briefly right now. And now that we've spoken about some of the experiential learning opportunities and also the program itself, I'd like to pass things over to our graduate program manager, Eva Morphy, who will speak about the admission details and the requirements for the Master of Supply Chain Management and Logistics program. Over to you, Eva. Thanks so much, Rihanna, and thanks everyone for uh, joining us for this presentation and watching along. I hope that the information that you've heard so far has really whet your appetite and, and uh, piqued your interest in the program. And you're probably at this point wondering, what are the next steps? I'm ready to apply. What do I need to do? So I'd like to walk you through that as well as some additional program details and hopefully answer many of the questions that you might still have at this point. So in terms of admission requirements, we are looking at individuals who have a bachelor's degree completed already. So uh, clearly this is a master's program that would build on a bachelor's degree. So that's a requirement. It can be a three-year bachelor's. It doesn't have to be a four-year bachelor's degree necessarily. And it doesn't have to be in the field of supply chain management or logistics. You don't have to have a bachelor of commerce or a bachelor of business administration that covers that particular topic area. You could be from engineering. You could be from the faculty of arts. You could be from um, education and looking for a career change um, or further enhance some skills that maybe you've learned only on, on the job uh, through a workplace setting, but maybe haven't formally uh, pursued through an educational um, setting. So this is a degree that's open to students from all academic backgrounds, and, uh, and it's uh, taught and delivered in such a way that all students can start on an even playing field level field and go through the program together and learn all of these um, exciting concepts together. So again, three-year bachelor's degree in any discipline. The GPA that we use for admission is going to be the last 60 credit hours or the most recent 60 credit hours of work that you've completed as a university student. So if you happen to have a four-year degree, we'll be looking at the last two years of that degree. If you have two degrees, perhaps a master's degree already, we'll look at the GPA in that most recent degree and maybe uh, take a little bit of courses from your previous degree as well to round out that 60 credit hours. The the GPA scale that University of Manitoba uses is a 4.5 scale, and the admission GPA, again, required is a 3.0. We're able to convert uh, documents, transcripts, and GPAs from any university, any institution in our country around the world. So when you submit your documents to us, we'll take care of this GPA calculation for you. 
And um, again, we are we have the conversion scales to convert from any grading system around the world. So that's not an issue at all. Um, and the 3.0 GPA, just to give you a bit of a comparison, is like a B average or about a 70% average to give you an idea of what that um, what that looks like in other in other scales. We also are looking for a GMAT exam. So that's a required test that I'll talk a little bit more in detail about in a second. Uh, it's a required graduate management admission test that we require for all of our grad programs here at Asper and at most graduate programs in business schools around the world. We're looking for a 550 GMAT specifically, and the quantitative section of the GMAT must have a minimum of 60th percentile. So we are looking for a combination of both. You must have the 550 GMAT overall, plus your quantitative section must be a minimum of 60th percentile. We do also require that you submit two uh, names of two referees that, that will serve as a reference for you in your application. So these can be professional references, so people you've worked with or reported to in a work setting. They can be an academic reference, so a professor that knows you very well and maybe you did some research or work with while you were a university student. As part of the online application system, you'll be asked to submit their name and their email address. And we will contact those referees directly. We'll send them a questionnaire that they'll fill out about you. And they'll be asked to submit that back directly themselves to your application system. You are not permitted to upload this reference on their behalf for them. It must be done directly by the referee from their own personal computer to the application system. So it must you must be removed from that, uh, th that process. So please be very careful with that as you submit your application. The students that don't have a degree from an English speaking country or perhaps a, a university where English was the language of um, instruction, the English language test requirement is also required for you as part of your application. So the two most common scores that we see are the IELTS and the TOEFL. So I'll talk about these specifically. There are a few other tests that the U of M accepts and those are listed on our website, but I'll highlight these two specifically. On the IELTS, you would have to have a 6.5 overall score on the academic module specifically, with a minimum of six on the speaking band. And if you're writing the TOEFL, on the internet-based test, a minimum score of 86 is required, and then a minimum score of 20 in each of the sections of the exam. Now, admission deadlines. So we do have one intake per year to this program. It's in the fall. We call it our fall term. It's early August. And the deadline dates for international students to apply is March 1st, and the deadline date for domestic students is May 1st. And these dates are the dates by which your application must be complete. So this is not the date to start or open your application, but this is the deadline date by which you must have all documents, including your GMAT, um, your referees uploaded reference forms, all of those pieces must be there in place by this deadline date to be considered for the next intake. Now, tuition and fees for the program. So domestic students see a fee of about $36,000, international students $48,000. This includes the co-op fee uh, or the practicum fee that's part of a uh, mandatory component of your program. So that's already included in these numbers. And the overall book and material costs for the program are estimated to be $2,500. We do have scholarships in various forms of financial aid for students to help with the cost of the program. So there's scholarships at the entrance level and then there's bursaries as well available to students who have a financial need. So first off, international students who have a GPA of 3.5 or higher at admission are automatically eligible for the entrance scholarship mentioned here. The award is approximately $6,000 for your first year. And then if you maintain a high GPA over your first year of the program, you can renew this award for year two for an additional $6,000 in your second year. And entrance scholarships are also available to students with Canadian degrees. So we have 10 awards available to self-funded students each year, um, the top 10 students entering the program with a minimum GPA of three. These awards are valued at $15,000 and they are paid out in installments over the time that you're here in the program. Whether you're a full-time student or part-time, they'll be spread out over the time that you're here. And as I mentioned, we do have a range of bursaries available as well. And these are for students who may not have some of the top GPAs, but do have a financial need that they can demonstrate. And we do have quite a bit of support available under that bursary umbrella for students as well. 
Now, if you happen to be a graduate of the Bachelor of Commerce program here at the Asper School of Business, there are a couple of course exemption opportunities for you um, for courses that you may have completed in your undergrad program that are also taught at a very uh, comparable level at the graduate uh, program in the MSCM. So specifically, the courses are Introduction to Management Sciences and Quantitative Analysis. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the Introduction to Management Science is equivalent to the Graduate Quantitative Analysis course. And then Undergraduate Supply Chain Logistics is equivalent to our Logistics Management in the MSCM program. So if you've completed either or of these courses in the last five years before starting your MSCM program with a grade of B plus or higher, you can be exempted from taking this course in your master's. So you save yourself a little bit of time as you go through the program, you lighten your load a little bit. And then if you're a U of M graduate, so not specifically from Asper, but a U of M graduate who has completed a number of courses in supply chain management, maybe through a minor, through your other faculty, you are eligible possibly for a GMAT or a GRE um, waiver. So if you've completed a bachelor's degree at U of M in any field with a minimum GPA of 3.25 in the last five years, and have completed four Asper School of Business Supply Chain Management courses. So these are courses that count towards the major in supply chain management. If your GPA across those four courses is 3.5 or higher, you would be eligible for a GMAT or a GRE waiver. So that's a wonderful benefit as well as you prepare your application. Okay, so GMAT exam, I mentioned this a little bit um, briefly a second ago when we were talking about admission requirements. So the graduate management admission test. This is a admissions test that's used by most graduate programs in business around the world, certainly the ones that are accredited through AACSB, which are sort of our comparator schools. Um, and we do require it for all of our graduate programs here at the Asper School of Business. So it is a test that you write at a test center. I believe for the most part, most test centers now around the world are open. Um, there were opportunities to write the test online at home during the pandemic. I don't know for sure if those are continuing when, um, when things open back up, but um, test centers are available all around the world. If you go to the mba.com website, you'll be able to find the one closest to you. There's test centers in pretty much every country around the world. You can find the one closest to you, find a date and time that's convenient for you, and you can register for the test right online through mba.com. Through that website, they also provide you with a number of, of um, um, resources to prepare for the test as well. So you don't have to walk into the test blindly or unprepared. There's a number of uh, books that you can purchase that will take you through sample questions and, and practice exams. When you register for the GMAT, uh, the M MBA Admission Council will provide you with a couple of sample tests for free as well. So you can run through an entire test kind of at home, sitting in a controlled environment and, and go through the whole three hour test to see um, how you do and give yourself a little bit of a benchmark and see where you need to prepare in terms of whether it's the quantitative skills or the qualitative skills that you want to spend more of your study time on. Most of our students spend somewhere between six to eight weeks, a couple of months uh, preparing for the GMAT. So factor that timeline into the admission deadlines so that you have time to prepare for the GMAT, write the GMAT and meet the admission deadlines as they come up. The test is $250 uh, US as well, as you mentioned that there. And we do, um, we do allow students to write multiple times. So what we do is we accept the highest score that you submit to us. You can write it multiple times to get the score that you, that you wish. Um, there's usually a, a short uh, sit out period between writing, so you can't sort of write it the next day, you have to sit out a couple of weeks, but um, certainly the, the opportunity is there to rewrite if you're not happy with your score the first time around. Now, in terms of the test itself and the components, there's four sections specifically to it. The analytical writing assessment is an essay section where you're given a particular question or a problem to discuss and write a short essay about. There's an integrated reasoning section with 12 multiple choice questions. And then the two key sections that factor into your score out of 800 are the quantitative reasoning and the verbal reasoning sections. These are quite important. So one focuses very much on your current mathematical skills, data sufficiency, problem solving. And then the second section, the verbal reasoning, will focus on your reading comprehension, critical reasoning, sentence correction, your grammar, your ability to use the, uh, the English language. So those two are the really key ones that factor into your score of 800 and are the ones that we focus on the most as we review your application. So I think from my end that covers everything in terms of the 
admission requirements and hopefully answered all your questions that you that you may have, feel free to email us at this address here, askforprofgrad at umanitoba.ca with any further questions that you would like us to, uh, to address. And we really look forward to your application.